In the last module, I described how to make the end particles rotate and how to use the instancer to attach red blood cell geometry to them. And in the current setup, the one thing that's holding these red blood cells inside of the artery is actually a function of the volume curve, which if we select here and, and look at it, it's the trap inside function. And that makes it so that these boundaries, these green dotted lines, will basically be the means by which the red blood cells are held inside this space. So if I press play here, you can see that works pretty well. However, when it gets a little more complicated, like this pinch I've added here with a lattice, the red blood cells will bunch up and back up and then basically be forced through that wall. And I find that this volume curve boundary, this trap inside function, works really well when the artery is simple, but when it gets complex, I usually do something a little different. I use a passive collider. A passive collider is built from geometry, and it's given an attribute that, so that the end particles will collide with it come into con when they come into contact with it. So the first thing we need to do here is actually get geometry to use. So let's first turn off these attributes that I've, or these characteristics I've given the volume curve. Most importantly, let's turn off the trap inside here. It's set to five. Let's set that down to zero. And then let's also select the lattice here and let's turn that off by going into the attributes and under deformer attributes, turning the envelope down to zero so it's not affecting anything. Let's play this all back to make sure it's working as we expect, and it is. I'm going to go into the geo layer now and I'm going to select the artery and I'm going to press Control D to duplicate it. Then in the channel box, the layer editor here, I'm going to remove it from the display layer that it's in by default, which is the display layer that its original object it's been duplicated from is in. I'm going to right click here and say remove selected object. I'm going to go to layers here and say create layer from selected. And I'm going to give it a name, collisions, and save. So I have some extra geometry here that I don't actually need. I don't need to worry about the red blood cells coming into contact with the outside. It's always best to keep it simple. So I'm going to remove the exterior of the artery here as I don't think it's necessary. In component mode, I'm selecting edge. I'm going to select this edge and double click. I'm going to select this edge with the shift key down so I don't lose my first selection. And then when I press space bar and go into edit mesh, I'm going to select detach. And finally, with the artery selected as a whole, not as a component, I'm going to go into mesh and select separate. And if we look in the outliner here, one thing that I like to do is select these two new objects and duplicate them so I'm not holding over any old history, delete the old ones, as I mentioned earlier, delete the outside, and then I'm going to remove this from that group that it's now a part of, delete the original group. I'm going to give this a new name. I'm going to call it Artery Main Collision. And with this geometry selected, I'm going to press the space bar, go to end cloth, and create a passive collider. In the options here, I'm going to make sure the solver is set to Nucleus 1. I only have one Nucleus in this scene. It's not really a big issue, but I just want to make sure. And press Make Collide. And when that's done, an InRigid 1 object has been created. And I can select that, go into the attributes here by pressing Control A. And I can look at the collision thickness. And when I do that, when I flip that switch on, I can actually see how far away from the object itself in particles will be when they interact with it. So it creates a sort of boundary and I can modulate that thickness with this attribute here. And if I look, I press the 4 key here and I'm going to go to the channel box really quickly here. I'm going to turn off a lot of these things so I can see more clearly. If I select that in rigid one object, control A, I can see where the edge of the inside of the artery is, and I can see where the collision will take place on both the outside and the inside. And if I play this animation and get a look at those red blood cells, remember 
there is that CFL, that cell-free layer, and I want to make sure that I use this thickness to enforce that boundary. And if you remember what I said in earlier segments, that should be about half the diameter of a red blood cell. So I'm just going to eyeball it here and look at this red blood cell to determine what that boundary should look like. And 0.812 is too large. I'm going to set that down to 0.7. That looks a little bit better to me. We'll probably go even a little smaller. I'll go 0.65. Okay, that works great. I'm going to change that emitter a little bit as well because I can... Actually, before I do that, let's just turn that collision to thickness off. We don't need to look at that anymore. I'm going to select the emitter and the attributes here for away from axis, I'm going to turn that up to 0.5. So that way it's going to actually cause a little more dispersion. It's going to throw those red blood cells a little bit farther out to make sure they actually get up to that boundary. Yeah, I like that better. Okay, that works well. And I'm going to quickly look at the end rigid here and see what the friction is set at 0.1. I'd like that to be a little bit lower. So it's a little more slippery. I'm going to go with 0 0.05. Now let's see if that pinch now creates a problem for this object. Let's go to the channel box. Let's bring back the ground. Let's bring back the main artery hole in half. I'm going to press the 6 key here. And make sure that that collision object is in the proper display layer there. So I can see. And in order to make that lattice affect this new collision object that we've made, we should go to the Windows menu, Relationships, Deformer Sets, select that lattice. And then if I open up the GeoLayer folder here and we look at the geometry being affected, we can see the ground is affected, the artery, the main, main haft. Let's also make sure that the main collision is affected. I'm going to close that out. Now I can make that pinch reappear. Control A to bring the attributes. FFD1. Under Deformer Attributes, I'm going to bring that envelope back up. Now if I play it back. Ah yeah, it works great. So now those red blood cells no longer are spit out from inside the artery. This passive collider is a little bit more robust of a way to retain those red blood cells. So in the next segment, I'll show another reason why this means of collision detection and in-particle retention is better for more complex situations.